Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And hi, Cynthia. Happy September. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's great to see you again. So yeah, for you guys tuning in, my name's Kristen and I'm joined by Cynthia. She's the CCO of Moneyline, a fintech company named one of the most innovative fintech companies of 2020 by Forbes and 2019's Best Digital Bank of the Year by Finnovate Awards. So I'm so excited to, to jump in. Are you ready? Ready. <laughs> okay, great. So, well, we were talking yesterday about having spent majority of your earlier career in CPG and retail. So I'd love to hear yeah. a little bit more about what motivated you to change industries to fintech. Well, many things. The first one is, um, this is the first time I work in, in a tech company for real. So if you look at my career, I started in CPG where you're pretty far from the customer because you're not really, it's not deep to see it. Then I moved to e-commerce. And now I'm in fintech. And while e-commerce, I was working in, in companies that were digitally enabled. I would say they were first retailers and then tech companies. And right now, it's the first time that I work with a tech team that is um, that is really running the show. And it's very different. Like, uh, for example, we uh, operate on a sprint basis. So just like every tech team, that works in other companies. They have sprints and they they plan what they're gonna do for, in our case, it's two weeks and report on A-B tests, performance, experiments that they're doing. We actually in marketing are doing the same. We're operating as if we were a tech team and that's how we plan our, our experiments. So that was one thing. I wanted to work in a company that had this quality of tech, tech leadership and tech, um, tech talent overall. The second one was, I, I have never worked in fintech. My husband works in fintech. I started getting interested in the, the impact that money had in people's lives. And I couldn't think of anything more important, I guess, except for healthcare, something that impacts the life of people more than their relationship with money. And this opportunity came, came to me and the, the vision of the founder, the vision of the leadership of really impacting and, and providing financial freedom through, through financial literacy, not just financial products, was very interesting to me. And I took it and I'm super happy I did. Well, I was going to say, I, you, you've touched on it within your answer. Do you have a favorite thing you've learned pivoting industries anything, or anything that surprised you? Mm, I mean, there's many similarities. Yes. Between, any, any industry, right? And I, I consider myself a marketer of any industry. We, uh, I don't know if I ever told you, but at some point in my career, I, I was doing marketing for a highway and my KPI wow. was traffic to the highway. Very different traffic. Literally. Literally. Yeah, so <laughs> very, very wow. random. So I really, I think I can, I can market anything. I, can, mm -hmm. I, I have learned to put myself in the shoes of the customer, even if I'm clearly not a truck driver, I'm not the customer yeah. of that highway. Um, but in, so in, in, the, in, the, in any industry, I think there are similarities, like you can drive people to try your brand or your product, usually with an offer, like yeah. retailers do it, banks do it. But what makes somebody stay, it's usually the experience, right? Providing oh, yeah. great experience in retail, in finance, that's what makes people st stay with a, a stay loyal. So that's not different between the world that I came from and the world that I'm in. But when it comes to differences, of course, regulation is different in finance. Oh, yes. <laughs> but uh, that's that's not really um, mm -hmm. what what makes it super interesting. What makes it more interesting is the richness of the data that we have. Like if you think about it, when you get when you're in retail and you get data you're getting data on a very small fraction of what somebody sells even being at walmart like people don't spend a hundred percent of their wallet in walmart sure. but when you get the layer of data of everything that people are receiving as payment who's paying them how much like who's the employer and how they're spending their money you actually get a much better view of the the person and you can actually do so much more interesting marketing tactics because you know them so much better so that's uh, that that has been surprising i didn't think it was going to be so much so much more insightful 
Yeah, it's very robust data in, in fintech, I think. And so for me, coming over to influential, uh, my career has been at large holding companies. So I've usually just been dedicated to one or two accounts at a, at a given time and then really understand intimately, you know, that brand story, their challenges and everything. And then coming over to influential, it's really opened my mind into all types of business challenges across all verticals and types of solutions. And I see it all like a puzzle and, you know, how can we yeah. help fit, uh, you know, fit those missing pieces to, to create a full picture for, for brands. But I will say pivoting to a more broader scope, the marketing fundamentals remain the same. Yeah. So that, which is really interesting. And, and a lot of times strategies uh, just lean on going back to basics and doing the basics yeah. well, and then building from, from there. So that's been really interesting for me too, and in terms of- You know what I'm gonna recommend uh, for you and anyone that's, that's listening? There is a book called Range. And mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly the, the tagline of the book, but it's something about, this is a world for generalists. And I used to think you have to, to specialize. The best thing you can do in your career is specialize. Yep. And I didn't, I became a generalist. So I read that book to try to convince myself that it was a good idea <laughs> to yeah. become a generalist. Yeah. Um, it, it, the author builds the case that it's very rare that like being a specialist in one industry or in one function, it's better. Even if you think about high-performing athletes, musicians, doctors, that if you are a generalist, you are much more able to do things differently and to become better than if you just specialize in one thing. So I am just like you, I'm trying to use what I learned in retail, in CPG, bring it to finance, which gives me a little bit of a, I think a competitive advantage versus a, people that just have been doing financial services marketing forever. So I, I like my path and I'm, I'm happy I made the switch to FinTech. Well, I'm and, and I'm happy because it brought us together. So I'm, I'm happy for that selfishly. So speaking of Moneyline, what's new at Moneyline and what's everyone getting excited about? I mean, if if you haven't, I mean, you have but anyone is watching, if you haven't, download the app. And the first thing you're going to see, it's what's new. We are a, a bringing on board content creators that are educating Gen Z and really the next generation of Americans on how to manage their money life, how to manage everything related to money. So in our app, unlike most financial services app, you will land on a feed more, uh, more comparable to like an Instagram or a TikTok feed, where you can see all these content creators, what we now call Finfluencers, giving you bite-sized tips on how to, to become more literate when it comes to financial decisions and how, how to make the most out of your money, how to plan for future financial freedom. So that's like what, what we're evolving to go from a financial institution that is fighting for the transaction, come transact with us, come spend with us, come save with us, borrow from us to come and become the owner of your financial future with us and we will help you so we're in a pretty i think it's a pretty big big shift yeah I, my ears perked up when you said creator so i was going to ask next but uh you touched on it the, the role what role do finfluencers right these financial influencers play for a money line and how they help bring new people onto the platform and i think brands that take risks and show real people with real stories will always find an audience that resonates on social and therefore help drive and promote that action and i think what you guys are doing with um, your the data collection and you know content connection is critical because it makes the customer interaction that much more impactful yeah like you you touched on something like these are real people mm -hmm. and when like most people don't understand what's a mortgage rate, what's a, like, even like basic tax terms, mo like literally two thirds of Americans cannot understand the most basic financial terms. Mm -hmm. And when you have somebody that is a professional, sometimes it's daunting and it, they explain it in terms that it's just really hard to understand. So yeah. we want to demystify those terms. And we want to show people that actually went through the same. I love the pieces of content in which you have somebody just like us 
that is going through the process of doing something that we will need to go through. Let's say that you need to apply for a mortgage and they document themselves going through the process, explaining what they learned. And really it's so much more impactful than having a financial advisor just like telling you words that it's almost like they're trying to make it hard so you just want to give them the money and move on, right? <laughs> like they make it hard on purpose. You know, it's, it's funny. I want to, I want to touch on that. You said people and, and you're calling, you know, customers, people so often, I just, a quick anecdote. So often in this industry, we say users and uh -huh. we talk about users, like, you know, social user, social media users, app users, you know, this user and, but they're people, right. They're uh -huh. not. So I like the phrasing there. It's semantics, but I, I think it's important to delineate because I, I think that's, I mean, you're totally right. It's real people. And we all have a financial situation. Uh, to varying whatever that degree is, we all are in some uh, stage or in need of some type of financial, um, you know, product. So I think that's really uh, impactful to to refer it refer to it as people. <laughs> so, I'll keep referring them as people. Human yeah. beings. <laughs> Human beings. So well, that that said, because we are in you know in marketing and you know the landscape is changing constantly, we're always uh, getting hit with headlines like the latest being like Chrome's cookies and you know yeah. uh, certain features going away or coming or being uh, being rolled out. So and there are a lot of platforms vying for people's attention at any given time. And so how does Money Lion? You had mentioned it earlier, and we're going to click on all of those um, things like stickiness and and financial literacy and yeah. in a bit. But how does Moneyline shape the site and app experience to win attention from potential customers? So like, really the recipe is aligning ourselves, the entire company, the product, the marketing team, and the, I guess everyone, mm -hmm. to drive repeat behavior. Mm -hmm. our, like one of our key metrics, which you don't see in financial services, it's monthly active users. And the the equation of daily active usage over monthly active usage, which means mm -hmm. how many people are coming to your app every month, but also what percentage of them are coming on a daily basis. And these are the KPIs that you would normally associate with Instagram or Facebook or any publication, right? Or even I imagine like Netflix looks at the same type of metrics, but banks, I mean, I don't think they're ever saying how often does somebody come to our branch? Mm -hmm. uh, so for us, moving away from the key KPI is transaction towards, we have another key KPI, which is engagement, has, been a sh has generated a shift in how we think, how we operate, what type of marketing campaigns and programs we launch, what type of product features we launch mm -hmm. to drive that engagement. And because we have that very rich layer of data, we, we believe that we can actually personalize your experience much better. If, if you go to any of our com competitors, like any social media, you will probably be able to find great financial literacy content. However, how do they know what you need? They don't know how much money you have, what's your financial situation, what you're on the market for. Of course, they have awesome algorithms. I mean, they do a very good job at personalizing your experience, but we have a layer of data that nobody else has that we will use to put something in front of you that will be useful for you in that specific moment of your money life. And we're, we're hoping and we're working towards driving that repeat behavior through the data, the personalization, and the, the features in our app that make it very sticky. Yeah, I, I think that's awesome. And I think Money Lion is well positioned to create those impactful personalized experiences because even with the current product um, offerings available today, tied to that treasure, like you were saying, tied to that treasure trove of data that you have on your customers, that alone gives you the formula to create different permutations and test and learn around which product to which audience and which type of messaging, which creator, which type, you know, how do we, which channels do we serve them on? I think that just opens you up to such a rich test and learn agenda, which yeah. gets, gets me very excited <laughs> um, as a, as a data. How do you guys do it? Can, can you like, can you tell us how you guys are approaching this cookie-less future? 
Oh, I can absolutely tell you this. I, I didn't tell you I was going to ask you that. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, but I, can, I, was I, just, I just worked on a, um, I actually just updated all of our collateral on this because um, after hosting a brand innovators event last week on the cookie list future, I, I felt it was uh, timely to update our, our offerings. But yeah, I think so our core business, right, is the marriage of uh, custom audiences content creators and measurement. And so our sourcing tool is powered by IBM Watson. And so we have a proprietary sourcing algorithm that brings in what I like to call a mini Myers-Briggs assessment of creators um, and their, their profiles, in addition to a lot of the API connections that we have with our, um, with our platform partners. And so we're able to kind of score, right? like assign a brand score to influencers to say, okay, for a given campaign, this list of creators is has a propensity to perform well for you based on you know this this and this and then from there we take those ai informed insights and marry that to our strategic data partnerships that we have which that can be a whole other session of yeah. <laughs> but uh, we marry that to the data stri strategic data partners that we have and then that's how we develop high value custom audiences for targeting and so we're constantly iterating in terms of copy and and uh, audience to creator uh, matching and A-B testing to understand once we have it, everything in market, what is that ideal optimal output that yields the best um, ROI or whatever the, the KPI is. So we actually have a future proof approach where and like moving into, as we move into the cookie list future, where um, we have a test and control methodology where we're discerning lift based on um, the impact of the influencer marketing campaign. So um, yeah, we're, we're excited. We, we've helped many, many brands. I think we service 60% of the, the Fortune 1000 and uh, achieve their various goals to foot traffic, tune in, in-store sales, um, social commerce as well, which is, which is getting big. Um, so we have a, we have a pretty wide range of, of measurement capabilities that help us to tie back the ROI. That's very cool. Yeah, it was a lot. I'm sorry. Yes. I can't no, no, it's I can't tell. Cool. It's a, <laughs> I mean, I think we have to try everything we can to, yeah. to approach this cookie-less future. Oh, sure. And I, I get, if you can't tell, I get very excited talking about yes. this. But yeah, it's, it's a very passionate, passion of mine. But I think, yeah, it's, it's interesting too. I mean, every brand has a varying degree of where they sit in, in terms of tech stack and, and where they sit in terms of just um, progress. And so I love fin talking to fintech about this because the regulations have always been there. So I, that's why I feel Money Lion and, and other fintech companies, they're positioned well to um, future proof against this cookie list future because they have all of this first party data that they're able to cultivate and kind of per permeate into different uh, or permutate into different um, combinations to make those personalized experiences impactful. Because like you were saying, right, these are people with real financial needs. And so, you know, if they're coming to the site because the intent was, you know, education on how to get a loan, uh, but they're getting served tax. Yeah. And because it's tax, because it's contextually tax season, right? Yeah. That's not helpful. And so that can turn yeah. away and, and gain market shares with, with your competitors. Or even I think uh, like being a responsible like company that doesn't push you to be like investing in crypto if you actually <laughs> like you you're in debt you know but right. I mean everybody not now but there was a time not long ago when everybody wanted to get on the crypto uh, bandwagon right and yeah. it's not for everyone and we want to help people make the right decisions so they can reach financial freedom. Um, I was reading the other day as I was doing some research that 97% of employees spend time during the day, during their work day, either worrying about money or like actively working on something to, to improve their money situation. And um, imagine how much, how much money is in the system if we can actually, like money in the system as in waste, if we can actually help people manage their money better their life better so they don't have to worry about that they're safe oh absolutely yeah absolutely i well that leads in nicely to um i want to talk more about financial literacy so i know that money lions company mission is to close that financial literacy gap and i saw mm -hmm. the company recently made some strategic acquisitions that help bridge that data to content connection how does data literacy feed into financial literacy for your clients 
it so it's it's similar to what I was saying before regarding like financial literacy is available to anyone, right? But we we use the data to make it more personalized. Yep. And the acquisition of Malca is giving us access to to creating content that is in a format that is very relevant to the consumer today. We can't ignore the fact that people are consuming content and consuming financial literacy content in social media platforms. So we have to go with where the, the user is, where the customer is, where the prospect is. Our prospects are looking at TikTok and they're looking at Instagram to, to know what to do with their money. So the acquisition of Malca is allowing us to, to have, um, think about it as a vertically integrated yeah. financial service, which I guess vertical vertical integration in my previous world was you would buy, you would be the owner of the cotton field and then you would produce cotton, produce clothing and have the retailer, right? In this case, it's we are, have the relationships with those influencers that will post the content on platforms where customers will see it, where prospects will see it. But then that content also lives in our app you will see it in a much more personalized and relevant way. And we are shortening the distance between either discovery or maybe you already come with some intent, but you can actually transact. If, you, if we can teach you how to do something and then make it super easy for you to do it, you're more likely to, to take action than if you are taught something or you learn something online in a different platform, and then you have to take the extra steps to, okay, I just learned that I should be saving $5 a week so I can have some piggy bank in the future. If we teach you that and we're like, click on this button and automatically you're gonna start saving so much easier, it's more likely to happen. So we think it's a, it's a, a great combination of giving you the, the financial literacy that you need, but also making it super easy for you to take action. Yeah, I love that. And, and when we were talking um, earlier, we were talking about um, that marriage of, so from me from the media, the paid media side, right? And you from the marketing side. So I believe that it's market or media's job, right? To get the custom, the potential customer to the site. And then it's the site's job to ultimately uh, deliver, right? And, and mm -hmm. do what it provided, easy, personalized experience, just like everything you're describing. And this is what gets me excited because when those two stars align, yeah. uh, in addition to like the audience target and like all the mechanics behind the actual paid side of the house, that just speaks volumes in terms of um, ROI potential. So um, I think you know, it makes such a difference, especially when there's so much um, noise in the space and there's so much, you know, on TikTok scrolling through or Instagram yeah. scrolling through and all these people offering up advice, not, you know, and no, gosh, sure. <laughs> yeah. and so, but there's so many distractions and, and noise out in the space. And so for, to efficiently um, find prospects, drive them to a site that offers them based on intent signals or known signals from yeah. first party data collection, that's, that's the goal. You know? And also, I mean, I think in this day and age, we we have to be able to try to personalize as high in the funnel as we can, right? Like personalizing lower in the funnel is easier because if you come with a lot of intent, we know what to put in front of you. Right. If you come with some intent, it's more about personas, right? We can do some persona development and say we have these five type of customers, but personalizing or segmenting higher in the funnel, that's where companies like Influential come to, to um to help us really not have to choose one influencer. Let's choose one influencer, put all our money in that bucket and just like see, see what, um, yeah. what, what we can do. So it, it's connecting that full funnel approach and trying to personalize it as much as possible that, that we're seeing results, like good results. Yeah, that's great. And I wanted to um, extend this a little bit into social responsibility. So yeah. talk to me about the role that social responsibility plays with, with Money Lion. Uh, the, the main thing where you see it right now, which is like the more obvious place, it's in the investing side of our business. You can actually choose to invest in causes that, uh, that you are aligned with and in companies that, that align with your values. And I don't, I don't think this is something that's negotiable for the new, the new, era of, yep. of um, 
financial services, commerce, the new generations are putting their money where their mouth is. I, I'm not super proud to say that I don't think my generation behaves that way. Like we used to say, yes, we care a lot about um, the world and ecology, but yet we loved fast fashion, right? right? So we didn't exactly put our money where our mouth is. We are seeing material decisions being made by the new, the new generation of customers that signal that they, they really do care. Um, there is a, um, an experiment, it's not from Moneyline, but an experiment that uh, one of my business school professors did with Crate and Barrel, where they gave, they did a Navy test. 50% of the customers had received a $25 coupon for their next purchase. The other 50% received a $25 coupon to donate to, there's an organization called Donors Choose, which I think it's focused on schools. It's something about education. But you could choose which charity to donate from Donors Choose. And the, the KPI was not just conversion, but retention, how quickly the person actually returned and became a loyal customer. It turns out that the, those that received the, the option to donate to charity returned faster and became more loyal than those that received the $25 off. Mm -hmm. And that just really clearly signals that your brand, aligning your brand with, with values matters to the new generation. So that's one thing. Of course, our whole company, it's mission driven. Our, our whole business model is mission driven. It is about leveling the playing field, about providing the forgotten customer segment, the forgotten America access to something that rich people have always had access to. There's, there's so many people in the US that are either unbanked or underbanked that traditional financial services companies have either not reached out to them or made it so expensive for them to get service that it doesn't make sense for them to, to engage. And it's, it's unfair, honestly. Like you're rich, you stay rich and you're poor, you stay poor. Like where is the American dream on that? So I think uh, Money Lions whole mission driven um, vision comes to life on everything we do. Yeah, I want to, I'm going to touch on diversity in a second. I, I had, but on social responsibility, I think that's so important and something that I want to emphasize for those tuning in and those tuning in for the, you know, video on demand later, um, the social responsibility piece, like people, I, I've seen stats to varying degrees on this, but they all basically say the same thing. And, and the last one I believe I saw was from Adweek where, um, all the, they report, you know, customers are very willing to align with brands that support their beliefs. And 78% of consumers said in this ad week report that uh, they made a purchase decision based on values in the past year, which is, which is huge. So it yeah. speaks volumes that, you know, brands should be really, um, you know, concentrating on, you know, or looking at, you know, what are those values that we want to come across, want to come across and how can we align, you know, with, with, with what we believe as a company and then also what will resonate with our, you know, customer base yeah. because it really is all about connections at the end of the day. You know, that's why we're, we do what we do, making, yeah. making meaningful con connection. But, um, but I wanted to, to touch on diversity because FinTech has historically been a male dominated industry. And I'd love to hear more about uh, what you were doing to drive diversity in your team. It's true. I mean, there's there's a lot of men in the room, but there's uh, an openness to to have women in the room. Um, how I, I'm going to ask you a question: What percentage of the financial decisions in a household do you think are driven by women? Ooh, okay. Let's see. Um, twenty twenty percent. A little higher. A lot higher. It's a lot? 90, 90. 90 percent. Yeah, I wow. think a lot of people believe that women make the purchasing decisions in terms of like groceries or furniture, yeah. but not the financial decisions. It turns out it's 90 percent. I think it's a it's a number from Forbes from a survey that I did not long ago, which uh, I think it's it just shows you that if you have rooms full of men making decisions of what to offer to women, it's a little hard. I think having a woman in the room yeah. helps a lot. We do bring a different perspective. What am I doing? I, I, I try to hire the best possible people, but I do try to at least recruit a diverse set, have people from all 
genders and age and nationality and mm -hmm. like obviously um, ethnicity yeah. come through the doors to, to apply for jobs and have a fair shot. Mm -hmm. And my team is pretty diverse in everything that I've just told you. <laughs> I'm like a, a pretty diverse team. But at Money Lion, we're taking steps. We're, we're being pretty intentional about having programs that will make women get to the top. We have uh, an employee like group called Women Who Roar. And actually, we have a podcast that um, you can like go and download the podcast. Great. I think we have just one season, but it's available. And um, the, the Women Who Roar group is, is setting up different coaching and mentorship programs for women in the organization to help each other grow. I think that just being at Money Lion gives the, the more junior women a little bit of, um, like they see me and they think, okay, I can get there, which is good, but it's not good enough. So I actually want to spend time with our rising stars, helping them get there. So we're putting together a mentorship program, coaching opportunities, and overall creating an environment where if you're a woman, you know that you can succeed here. And they, having, having a woman that is Latina, that has two young kids being a, in the executive team, I think it's something that, that is inspiring to them. And they, they see that they can, they can get here. So. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I also think if, uh, you know, with the products itself, I mean, the financial literacy uh, efforts that you guys are making to ensure that underrepresented or marginalized communities are, are able to access and receive um, education on, on their financial um, situations or, you know, if just for yeah. you know, general learning, I think that speaks volumes, right? It's, totally. it's, not, it's the actions that the company is taking too. And that I think is, is well represented. But you're touching on something that, that I'm sure it, it's part of your world too. Sure. We choose and we're choosing more and more influencers that show that diversity. Yes. The likelihood that you are going to follow a few influencers that looks like you, they, they still have to be aspirational, right? They still, you have to be able to imagine yourself in their shoes. So that diversity is super important in the marketing we do. Oh yeah. And as a, you know, as an influencer marketing company, we have a, a responsibility to be a force for good in the social media ecosystem. And mm -hmm. our company's mission is to provide opportunity in the form of equi like equality and equity to marginalize underrepresented communities um, in the broader creator economy. And as a result of our efforts, over 90% of our campaigns actually feature a diverse creator. Yeah. Um, we're still making, that uh, stats are from 2021, we're still making, and we're still gro growing and, and increasing yeah. those, those numbers, but it is really important. You know, one said, this is not about Money Lion, but I used to work at a different company before where we, we wanted to be diverse in our marketing, but it was hard because we would do casting and we would get like skinny white men through the door. So we actually had to be so intentional that we had spread, spread, spreadsheets of what we wanted to show. And it was, we wanted to show diversity in, uh, in um, like ethnicity, but we also wanted to show body diversity. So we were like, okay, what are the sizes we want to show in our catalogs, in our marketing? Because it's really easy to just do the same thing over and over again. We were intentional about like holding ourselves accountable for showing yeah. that diversity. Oh yeah, um, at Influential too, I, you know, it's, I, I say, so innovation, diversity, equity, um, inclusion, all permeate all aspects of it. So it's not just like one thing, right? Because you, you even said it's like, the, so it's focusing on diverse creators, but all types of diversity. And then also, you know, we have our company programs and safe spaces and events that we, that we host. And then um, for me leading the innovation uh, department, we have, we have a dedicated team focused on innovation but we seek perspectives beyond those focus area leads because we strongly mm -hmm. believe a good idea comes from anywhere. So mm -hmm. just because we have a lead for web three, creator commerce, live shopping, uh, sports, et cetera, you name it, uh, doesn't restrict work from those specific individuals. Um, we're constantly bringing in company perspectives. And, and that's honestly where the magic happens when we get yeah. the most perspectives on an idea or how to roll something out. Um, different features, you know, that's, that's where we find our, that's where we yeah. do our best work. That goes back to my first point about being a generalist. 
Yes. Yes. Oh, you bring other perspectives. Oh, that was a great full circle moment. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I don't think we have any questions in the chat. So I have. I see something in the chat. Is it a question? No. Brilliant. No, it's asking if there are. Ah, any okay. No questions. <laughs> yeah, okay. but we'll, we'll keep going, you know, until uh, we get kicked out. So um, let me scroll through to see what else we have. So, oh, I guess, you know, one of the things I'll ask you is what's on the horizon for Money Lion? So much, but we are, we are going to help more and more Americans reach financial freedom. So in the horizon is just bringing that vision to life. And um, I hope that when people go, like start, start be making going to Money Lion part of their daily routine and their thumb, you know how your thumb, you take your phone and suddenly you're like checking Instagram, checking TikTok, we want to be the place that, that people go once a day to become more empowered to, to find that financial freedom. That's, that's, that's in the horizon. And I don't think it's very far. I think we can achieve it. I think we have what it takes. I agree. I'm excited for Money Lion's continued growth and I'm rooting for you guys. And thank you. You certainly have the right strategies in place and particularly, and you know that I'm passionate about this, an operationally efficient tech stack, uh, so, which gets my stamp of approval. So, yeah. So I'm excited yeah, for that. Yeah. You know, um, I think the, the something I'm excited about that we're working on, it's not my team, but we're a stakeholder, is we are creating what what's going to be probably the best in the industry cdp customer data platform Thanks. and for those that don't know like a cdp collects uh, data points on customers so then you can use them in as real time as possible in as the, the appropriate channels so to give you a, a specific specific example of fintech when people are looking for a loan they may need the loan immediately. They may actually be looking for money to put food in the table for their family. So the real time timeliness of that data is super important. The, con the having the pipes connected so we can act on that insight is super important. And being able to then activate, put the message in front of you, give you your loan, and then feed that data platform so we have all like we know what you engage with we know if you took the loan it's it's key and we are in, in a day and age where the technology is actually allowing us to do something that 10 years five years two years ago wasn't possible so i think we are building the the customer data platform of the future at money lion i think the ability to predict customer behavior is huge and that's that's great i mean um, last week, I moderated a brand innovators event on the cookieless future, and that was essentially the thesis of, of the day, which was the importance of cultivating a strong customer intelligence, because the more holistic customer profiles you have, that allows for better prediction on your customer behavior, which yeah. then subsequently fuels your customer experience, that personalization, yeah. which will hopefully yield not only ROI, but higher yeah. time value. You have to be able to predict if you don't want to continue paying Google forever, right? right. Like, of course, if you want to have a search ad and when somebody is ready for, to ask, like to search for something that you have, sure, then you're paying the rent. If you can predict what people are going to need and then put the message in front of them at the right time, then it's when the magic happens. Oh, absolutely. And it also helps understand, you know, the why, like what, what motivates your, your customers too, yeah. which is so important because that just helps to strengthen that connection that you have and their loyalty, right. To, yeah. the, to the platform. Exactly. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so I have like deeper questions that we won't have time to go We don't have to talk offline. <laughs> Let's have yeah, we'll have to talk offline. <laughs> I don't see any questions in the in the chat though. So let us know if um let us know if we need to uh need to keep asking or <laughs> I think we're done. Yeah. You you can have two more minutes, not maybe enough for that deep question. Yeah, I have a lot of deep questions. But uh, Cynthia, any final thoughts to leave us with? Mm, well, I think um for anyone in the financial uh, services industry. I just want to encourage everyone to think, to really recognize the role that we play in, um, 
in people's lives and think about how how deep the work that we do, how much can it influence somebody? Because it, most Americans are in a vicious cycle where they, they don't have financial health, which makes them more stressed out, which prevents them from actually being able to plan. Like if you're stressed out and you're worried about money, you can't actually focus on planning for, for your money future, which means you're back to being stressed and it's this vicious cycle, which is very hard to get out of. So if you guys work in the financial services industry, regardless of where you are, really take, take it upon yourself to help, to help others. It's gonna come back as goodwill. People, customers are going to become more loyal to you, but you're also gonna be hopefully doing something that feels like it's, 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 there's a bigger purpose than just getting the transaction, getting the, the average revenue per user up. So I, I just wanna encourage everyone to think of yourselves more than just marketers of financial services, but we have a bigger purpose. Well said. Fantastic, you too. That was a great conversation. Thank wow. You. Now I wanna ask the audience too, did you catch the two references to 90%? Little pop quiz. Okay, <laughs> Cynthia taught us that I think it was around 90% of financial decisions are made by the woman in the household. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Woman, women who roar indeed. Right. And so exactly. that's one reason why money lion taps a range of influencers and yay. Kristen reminds us that at influential 90% <laughs> of their campaigns utilize diverse influencers. So that, you know, that was such a well-rounded conversation with really, really great takeaways. I want to thank you both. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much.